Hey everyone, it's Belinda. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do an overview of the Revit plugin called Arc Smarter Power Pack for Revit. This plugin was created by a guy named Michael Kilkelly, and he seems like a really smart guy because the number of functions packed into this one plugin is really impressive. Let's see what it can do. Head over to the Arc Smarter website. I'll link it in the description below and scroll down to Powerpack for Revit. Click on Learn More About Powerpack and you'll see a new tab pop up. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on Pay What You Want. The minimum price for this plugin is just $1. Once you enter your credit card details, a Windows installer package should automatically be downloaded to your computer. When you install it, open up your Revit file and click on the Add Ins tab. You should be able to see the Arc Smarter plugin right there. I'm first going to look at Batch Insert. Now the drop down option shows you that you can either batch insert DWGs or Revit files. I'm going to click on DWGs and you can see that I can insert it as a link or an import. I'm going to position it center to center and preserve the colors. Once I browse to the three door detail files that I want to insert, I'll hit open and immediately three drafting views are created with the door details. You can see that all the original CAD file colors were preserved. In the same way, I can also choose to batch insert several Revit files. Next is batch rename. In the pop-up, you can see that you can select the scope that you want, a room name, room number, sheet names, etc. I'm going to select room names and rename everything with the word room to lab. And you can see five room names are updated. Similarly, I'm going to change all the room numbers, which say 120 to 130. And five room numbers were updated. I'm also going to rename all the sheets, which say unnamed, to floor plans. Similarly, I can change all sheet numbers that contain A to E. And you can see that A101 was changed to E101 and A102 was changed to E102. Now remember, the only way I could do this was because I didn't select match whole word only in the pop-up. Next is Power Convert, where you can convert all layers of your inserted DWG file into Revit lines. When I hit Power Convert, it asks me to select the DWG that I want to convert into Revit lines. I'm going to select this door details one that you see on the right. And it tells me that there are two different DWG layers in this file. There's frame and sections. I'm going to choose the Revit thin lines for both of those DWG layers. When you delete the DWG file, you can see that all the lines were traced over into Revit lines. You can also choose to quick convert your DWG file. If you don't want to select different line types and just select one, in this case, thin lines, just choose this option. You can see that 316 thin lines were created and we get the same output that we got earlier. Next is replace font. Even in this option, you're able to select the scope. So I'm going to select everything for now. And I want to replace the Arial font with the Times New Roman font. So as soon as I hit OK, you can see that 33 dimensions and one label style was updated. And the dimension string on the right now has a Times New Roman font. Next up is the ability to create sheets. Now, when I hit the Make Sheets button, I get this uh, pop-up. Since I don't know what format the CSV file needs to be in, I'm going to hit this plus button at the bottom to create a default CSV file. When I open up this default CSV file, I can see that I need to enter sheet number, sheet names, and view names. I'll keep the sheet numbers and names the same, but I'm going to change the view names to second flow, third flow, and atrium roof. Once I save that CSV file, I'll head over back to my Revit file, navigate to the default CSV file, make sure my title block is a 30 by 40 horizontal, and I can also choose either a placeholder sheet or an actual sheet. When I hit OK, you can see that three sheets were created, A100, A101, and A102, and they were named exactly as they were in the CSV file. Next, I'm going to create views. I'm going to select a ceiling plan view type. 
and I'm going to create views for the second flow and the third flow. I can also pick view templates, scope boxes and design options, but I'll leave them all as none for now. When I hit OK, you can see that two new ceiling plans were created. Next is copy views. Here you can batch duplicate views that are currently in your project. You can select as many flow plans, ceiling plans or 3D views or even sections and elevations as you like. Then select the number of duplicates that you want and under duplicate settings, pick whether you want a simple duplicate or duplicate with detailing or a duplicate as a dependent. I'm going to pick these two to be dependents. Once it's done, I'll navigate to my project browser and you can see that a second flow plan dependent was created as well as the third flow plan dependent. Finally is the align views tool. You can see I have the test sheet zero on the left and a test sheet one on the right. So I want A101 to look more like A100. So when I hit align views, I'm gonna select A100 as the master view and then I'll select A101 to be the views that I want to align it to. I'm gonna select the alignment point as top left. And you can see on the right that A101 looks more like A100 now. I'd encourage you to go download this plugin and try it for yourself and support Michael in any way possible. He's done a really amazing job creating this and maintaining it for every version of Revit that's released. Let me know what you think about this video and the plugin in the comments below. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, I'm Belinda. Thanks for watching.